And then his sons after him were the high priests. They were the ones that represent the people to God. They bring, <coughs> they, they, the priests bring um, the people's need to God. Uh, bless God. The prophets bring uh, the answer from God to the people. God's more peace. So we see Jesus here is the high priest over the house of God, over the church. He's the high priest. And so verse 22 says, um, when we come, when we come in prayer, let us draw near with a true heart. Let us draw near with a true heart. Remember the high priest, they're like Aaron, had to, for, before they go into the Holy of Holies, um, they had to kill a lamb, uh, what, whichever animal, lamb or goat, for a sin offering. They had to wash themselves with the, with the labor, the water that was in the labor, cleanse themselves. They had to offer up their um, the incense and the burnt sacrifice before they can go into the holies of holies. Bless the yeah. name of the Lord. Amen. So we can go, we would have to kill animals, but we can go boldly to the throne of grace because the blood of Jesus covers our lives. Amen. The blood of Jesus, that was the lamb or the goat that the high priest would kill, offer up a sin offering before you go into the holies of holies. So Hebrews 4, uh, I think verse 16 or 16 tells us we must come boldly to the throne of grace. Because the blood of Jesus covers us, so we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Um, so he says in verse 22, of Hebrews 10, 22, Let us draw near with a true heart. A true heart. That is what Paul teaching in 1, Corinthians, 1 Timothy 1. A pure heart. Let us draw with a true heart. A true heart is a pure heart. In full assurance of faith. Faith, full assurance of faith. We talk about faith and faith. Timothy 1 verse 5, sincere faith. So we should draw near with full assurance of sincere faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. Pure water water. Uh, but it's wash with pure water. Amen. Wash with the water of the word. St. John 17 uh, could be verse 4. So we are, we are clean through the word. Or 17. Some of there. So we are clean through the word of God. Amen. So we maintain our conscience. A clean conscience. Amen. With a true heart. But what comes out of the heart of man. That's what pollutes the man. And when, when we are polluted, that is where our conscience convicts us that we are in the wrong or we are in sin. So if we maintain a pure heart, a true heart, we shall have a good conscience and we shall walk in a good conscience, as Paul says in First Timothy 1 and verse 5. Um, another thing that we learn there from... The chapter one, as we as as we look at the other verses, um, it says that the law is good if we use it for the purpose it was designed. The law is good if we use it lawfully or for the purpose for that which it was designed. For the law was not enacted for the righteous, but for the lawless, those who are unruly and sinful. Uh, we also learn that Christ calls us. Every believer, every person who is born again is called of God. We are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are called. Christ calls us. Um, and he calls us to the work of the ministry. So when he calls us from sin and we are saved, then he you now calls us to the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry. Um, verse 12, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who had enabled me, First Timothy 1 and verse 12, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Ministry there is the service, the service of the Lord. Puts him into the service of the Lord. So everyone who is saved, everyone who is born again, 
we must be involved in the service of the Lord. It is not enough just to come to, to, to the house of God, um, worship the Lord, and go home. It is not enough. Um, we must, amen, be involved in the service of the Lord, service unto the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Service unto one another. But when we minister service to one another, amen, we are in the work of the Lord's ministry, doing God's, God's amen, God's work. Amen. He calls us. So Jesus, amen, Jesus is expecting us to be faithful. Verse 12. Uh, Jesus is expecting us to be faithful. Faithful in the work of the ministry. Um, tonight, um, we prayed for different persons and different era of ministry. Bless the Lord. Praise God. And so we must be faithful, whatever we are doing. Uh, the preacher, uh, Solomon, said, whatever we find to do, we should do it with all our might. Jesus said, occupy until I come. So none of us should be lazy. None of us should be idle. Should occupy until he comes. Amen. We understand also that every person can obtain mercy no matter what they have done. That is um, a first verse from verse 13. Verse 13 that we look at Sunday. Verse 13, Paul says that he was a blasphemer before. Ah, and all different things that he was before, he was born again. So we, 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 we see here from verse 13 that every person can obtain mercy no matter what they have done, or no matter what we will do, we can find mercies because the mercies of the Lord, they are new every morning. They are new every morning. Just as how God provided for Israel every day in the wilderness, he provided bread for them every day. All they have to do is go out and pick it up. God provides his mercy for us Every day, every day, we cannot exhaust the mercies of the Lord. They are new every morning. Um, according to verse 15, we see that Christ Jesus came to save sinners. So according to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, it is the teaching in the word of, of the Lord in the Bible that Jesus came to save sinners. Verse 15, Paul said, of whom I am chief. Jesus himself said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I came to save sinners. So that's according to the teaching of the gross gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus works in and through our lives to minister to others his nature and character. And who he is, and who he is. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. According to verses 14 and 15, for the Christ is going to work through him. Bless God. That, amen. That he might, he might be a vessel that God will work through. Amen. For the encouragement and for the strength and for the saving of others. So we have to understand that we are saved so that God can use us as a vessel to reach others. When we go through a situation, amen, it is not just for us just to go through that situation. We are not the only one who should benefit when we go through that situation. But those who are looking on should also benefit. Amen. Their, 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 their faith should be encouraged. Hallelujah. Uh, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went through their persecution, when they were cast into the fire, they experienced the miracle of God. God was before they dropped in the fire. That is why nothing was burned on their body. Uh, and so they could say that they experienced the miracle of God in that fire that was heated seven times utter. 
But not only did they experience the miracle of God, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and those who uh, witnessed, they also amen, benefited from their experience of being cast into the fire. And Nebuchadnezzar said, observe. He observed and he said, did we not cast four men, uh, three men rather, into the fire? No, we see four. So whatever we go through in life, understand, amen, that God will use it for his glory, not only for our benefit and blessing alone, and our maturity, spiritual maturity, and and et cetera, et cetera, but also those that we know, and even those who we don't know that know us. Amen. Their lives are ministered unto. Because if we are going through a situation and we give up, Somebody is going to observe it. Amen. And and sometimes there are, there are persons who are watching us that we don't even know that he's watching us. They're not there, but they're watching us. Amen. They are taking a leaf from our book. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. So we have to understand, we must understand, bless God, the things that we go through. Amen. The Lord will use it. Amen. For his glory. Look at verse 16. He says, Albeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. In me, individually, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. For a pattern, for a pattern. Our life is, amen, is, a, is a pattern. For a pattern to them. We should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. To life everlasting. Uh, look at what Jesus suffered on the cross. Bless the name of the Lord. And the Bible tells us that they said the, 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 the soldier that was there that was in charge of the, the old person, um, crucifixion, he said, truly, this was the Son of God. Amen. So all that Jesus went through that he saw and he witnessed. Amen. It ministered to him. It ministered to him. When he heard Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. They are, they are spiritually blind. Hallelujah. It ministered to him. And he said, truly, this was the Son of God. And so he left the scene. Amen. Bless God, a convinced man that Jesus was the Son of God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. So what we go through, we should be mindful that we are ministers. We are vessels of the Lord. We are vessels of the Lord that God is using to minister to somebody. Sometimes God is teaching somebody else how to trust him. Amen. Remember, remember Job? God said to Satan, do you consider my servant Job? Right? So, <laughs> when God is working through a life, even the devil is going to recognize it. Do you consider my servant Job? That he's an upright man. Satan did observe that. Right? That's why Satan Competed him and envied him because God speak highly of Job. So understand that when God is working through our lives, Amen. As a pattern, Amen. To them, we should hereafter believe on Him to life everlasting. Oh, bless God as God uses us, Amen. We must be mindful. God is working out His purpose, Amen. He's transformed the life of somebody else. Bless God. He is he's changing somebody. He's drawing somebody else unto him. Hallelujah. When God worked through Israel, when God judged Egypt, when God judged Egypt, not only was Egypt judged, and the gods of Egypt judged, the God of the Nile and the God of flies. Uh, that's Beelzebub. Beelzebub, the God of flies. Uh, the God of flies and all the plagues represent a God in Egypt that God judged. 
Uh, the scripture says that other nations, other nations heard and fear God. <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. By the time they get to, children of Israel get to Jericho, they did not have the strength to even fight. They lock up. Mm-hmm. They locked up. And they were fearful and trembling. Although they had a big wall that protected them. They were fearful. They were not fearful when the children of Israel got there. I was marching around the wall. They were already fearful when they heard what God did in Egypt. And realizing that Israel is now coming in their, their direction. Because they heard what God has done. They heard that God dry up the Red Sea. Believers, when, listen, when our life is a testimony, when others see and hear, amen, bless God of our victory. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. That is all. Amen. Jesus is going to draw others for he's, he's working through us as a pattern. Hallelujah. To touch other lives. Bless the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, thank you, Jesus. According to verse 15, yeah, Christ Jesus came to save sir, sinners. He worked through us, yes. Uh, we want to look at Numbers chapter 4. Uh, let's go to Numbers chapter 4. Now, the entire chapter of Numbers 4 deals with service, work in the ministry. Um, Numbers chapter 4. And it gives the instruction of the different tribes, Levites, the Levites, of the Levites, different names, not the tribes, different names of the Levites um, that should be working in the service of the Lord, the service of the service of the tabernacle, working in the service of the of the tabernacle. Um, Numbers chapter four. Numbers chapter four. Um, and the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Korah, and from among the sons of Levi, after their families, by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even until fifty years old, all that enter into the house, to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. So according to First uh, Timothy 1 and verse 12, Paul Say Christ Jesus has found me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Now this ministry, remember we said earlier on that all of us we are called, we are called to serve, we are called to be a witness. Every one of us is called to be a witness. That is our general call. And there are some of us that get specific call. Our specific call. Um um Jonah had a specific call, go to Nineveh and preach. So Paul was talking about his specific call at this moment, where God found him faithful and put him into the ministry. His ministry to minister to the Gentiles, the gospel of grace. Amen. So Paul said the Lord count him faithful. I think some weeks ago we looked at where Paul was, was separated onto the ministry from the book of Acts. I think Acts chapter 13, where he was separated onto the ministry. The prophets and others that were fasting and praying, they said the Spirit of the Lord spoke through them and said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work of the ministry. So. All of those who were praying for to prayed for tonight and others who were not prayed for because of time, wherever we are working in the body of Christ, amen, we are assigned in the service of the Lord to the work of the ministry. And so therefore we must take it seriously. We cannot treat it less than how we treat our our job. We must treat it as priority number one in our lives. Now, for many of us, for many of us, our job come first and then our work at church come after. 
Amen. Amen. Are we, am I still there? Yes, Pastor. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. For many of us, our job is treated with more importance than what we do for the Lord in the work or the service of the ministry. Oh, bless God. Uh, when it comes to the service of the ministry that we are called to serve in the church, many times it is if we have time. But our job, we make time for it. Sometimes we even want overtime. Oh, man. And overtime plus overtime. Oh, glory be to God. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. And, and many times we'll say, um, well, the Lord understand, you know, and somebody else will do it. But we have to understand that we are the one who are given the responsibility for this task. Amen. He <laughs> says uh, in verse 3, he said, from 30 years old and upward, um, even until 50 years old, up to 50, all that enter into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. Now remember uh, that the Levites, the Levites, they were the ones that were separated for the priesthood and the work of the ministry. Now, not all Levites, although it was the tribe of Levi that was separated to do the work of the ministry as Levites, work of the tabernacle as Levites. Not all Levites were used as priests and as high priests because there were specific requirements for these Levites for them to serve in the tabernacle. So there were, there were Levites from a tribe of Levi who never served in the tabernacle because they were not qualified. They were not quali- although they were Levites, they were not qualified to work in the tabernacle. Because there are some specification that was set out for them to work in the service of a tabernacle. So understand that we as priests, as the as holy priesthood, just as the priesthood of Aaron, we are holy priesthood. And we are called to the service of the Lord. We must take it seriously and understand that when we are called to the service of the Lord, no matter how menial it, it is, no matter if other person look down on it, as long as we are called, this is what we are called for the Lord to do. We are to do it with all our heart. We have to do it with the greatest of commitment. We have to understand that we are doing it as unto the Lord and not unto men. But sometimes the things that we do is going to be criticized. Sometimes the things that we do is not going to be appreciated. But we must understand that we are doing it as unto the Lord. Because he's the one who call us. First Timothy 1 and verse 1, Paul says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, called of God. So we must always remember who called us to his service. We must always remember who called us to salvation. We must always remember who called us to the work of the ministry. So ministry here is not talking about reconciled family ministry or any other church that, you know, um, spiritual angelic ministry the ministry here is talking about the ministry to the service of the lord the appointment to the service of the lord or commitment to the work of the lord a uh, matter of fact in numbers here numbers 427 we're going to read that a little more but the, the word ministry from from numbers 427 the word ministry there means work work of any kind work of any kind so just as how the Lord gave to the church the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, and the teacher, so is it the Lord called many, called some, amen, to, to, to intercession. The Lord called some to worship and praise. 
Lord caused some to fix up the chairs. Bless the name of the Lord. The Lord caused some 